Hey guys, welcome back. This is me Sahil Mahajan and in today's video we're going to be talking about Amazon S3 that is a simple storage service and also on how can you create an S3 bucket. So basically let's start off with what is basically Amazon S3. Going off with what Amazon says, Amazon S3 is an object storage built to retrieve any amount of data from anywhere. So basically you can Think of Amazon S3 as an object store. Now, a few of you may ask, what is an object? An object is basically any file with any extension is what we can take as an um, object. And how it works over here is basically you can use it for any use case. You can upload, you can move your data to an Amazon S3 bucket. Uh, maybe it could be log files, application data, maybe some backup stuff, some videos. And then according to your use case, you can have access control, you can move them where, uh, within different storage classes, which we will also go into in detail. Um, you can replicate data to various different regions, protect and secure your ga uh, data. And finally, you can use AI or analytics for advanced analysis of your data. So now let's head over to the AWS console. Um, so guys, for this video, you will be required an AWS account. Um, it could be a, a free account or a paid account that's completely up to you. For the free tier for um, the S3, um, you can store up to 5 GB of data in an S3 bucket. So once you come over to your um, console, you're logged in with your free tier and everything. Um, either if you have visited before, then you may have S3 recently visited. If not, you have two methods. One is you can go to services and then you can just, um, you know, go down to storage and yeah, I, I'm able to find it right now, but yeah. Or another thing what you could do is you can just click on, you can type in S3 over here and you will get over here, scalable storage in the cloud. Click on S3 and it opens up the S3 management console. Now once this management console is open, as you can see right now, I have a few buckets, hence why it's showing that. If not, it'll be like no buckets created. So first we're gonna click on create bucket. Once you click on create bucket, you're gonna give a bucket name. So um, let me give it um, AWS tutorial S3, perfect. And you, you can select whatever region you want. I'm sticking with US East, that is in North Virginia. Um, if you, if you want to copy a few settings from your existing bucket, you can do that, but we're not going to do that. Uh, coming to object ownership. This is basically, you have two options over here. One is called ACL disable and one is ACL enable. ACL is basically access control lists. Um, this is that ACL disable means that any object in this bucket is owned by this account itself. And if ACL is enabled, that means that other AWS accounts can own the objects in this specific bucket. So moving on, we have block public access settings for this bucket. So basically, if you want to uh, put this bucket as a public bucket, then you would remove this block or public access, assuming that you do not want the bucket to be public and you're only using it for private um, use cases then you would enable block all public accesses a uh, one use case wherein you would disable block all public access is when you are creating a static website through um, amazon s3 and we will also go over how can you create a static website so as i am going to be using this say uh, you know what? i'm going to leave it blocked because we're not going to do anything with this bucket coming down to bucket versioning Versioning basically what it does is it keeps multiple variants of the say of the object in the same bucket and What happens is by default bucket versioning is disabled So if you do want to enable it you can enable it the advantages of bucket versioning is that maybe you know you Uploaded the same file, but something wrong or something corrupt So you have access to the previous versions of the file on top of that if bucket versioning is enabled and you, um, let's take you want to delete an object. When you delete an object, it does not permanently delete the object from the bucket. It just marks the object for deletion. In the sense, it puts a marker saying that this object is meant for deletion. 
So uh, we're going to leave this uh, disabled for now because you know we're just creating a normal bucket. Assuming you want to put in any tags, you can put in any tags over here. Coming to default encryption, in this you have two types of encryption key types. One is the Amazon S3 managed keys, where basically Amazon manages the uh, Amazon S3 manages all the keys for you. You do not need to do anything. And another thing is where you have is the AWS key management service key. Assuming that you have any keys present in your uh, KMS, that is your key management system, you can use them. We're going to stick with the Amazon S3 managed keys. So that's about it. And we're moving on. If you open up advanced settings, you get one option, which is called object lock. So what object lock means is it prevents the file or sorry, it prevents the object from being overwritten or being deleted. So many times what happens is maybe the user has by mistake deleted the file or maybe you know they have um, um, uh, they are doing some operation that can over uh, write an existing file. So if you want to disable that you want you don't want things to you know get overwritten or something you can come over here and you can enable the option. We don't require object lock for now so I'm giving it disabled and then finally once everything is done we can head over and choose create bucket. Oh, it says bucket with the same name already exists, so no worries. Um, let's go with uh, YouTube and let's see if this works. Uh, create bucket. Hopefully it does, and I think it does. And here you go. It says successfully created bucket, AWS tutorial S3 YouTube. And as you can see, the first bucket comes over here, AWS tutorial S3. It says the region shows your access type where we did choose that the uh, objects are not public. Hence it says bucket and objects are not public. And this is your creation date and timestamp with your specific time zone. And now um, clicking on our bucket, as you can see, this is going to be your interface where you can see all of your objects over here and perform actions on your objects. You have properties, I'll just go over um, quite I'll just go uh, giving you an overview of all the objects, uh, the, sorry, of all of these tabs over here. Nothing in depth as of right now. Um, you have a bucket versioning, so we disabled it, but assuming that you want to enable bucket versioning at um, any given point of time, you can come and enable bucket uh, versioning. You have your bucket overview, which tells you which region your bucket is placed in, what is your ARN, that is your Amazon resource name. This is, uh, this is mostly required when you are creating IAM policies and other such things. And it finally gives you your create date and that. If there's any tags that you have put um, that's there, you want to add more tags, you can edit. It shows your default encryption related data. And assuming that you are working with the intelligent theory in storage class, which we will come, uh, we, we will talk in the near future. Um, then you can create a few configurations over here. You want a uh, server access login, you can enable, disable it here. You want uh, you want to record uh, AWS CloudTrail data events, um, you can do that here. We'll speak about what is AWS CloudTrail in the next couple of videos, so you guys will get a better understanding. Any event notification, um, transfer acceleration, your, again, your object log. Um, object log basically, can only be enabled or disabled on, on bucket creation. Once the bucket has been created, you cannot edit this. And finally, this is something that we have for static web hosting, and we will talk about this in our next couple of videos. Coming back up, we can head over to the permissions tab, wherein you can see our permission says that the bucket and objects are not public. If you click over it, you get a, a, a small description related to the same. As you mean, uh, remember we selected that block all public access. If you want to change that access, you can click over here, edit and change it. Finally, if you have any uh, specific bucket policies that you would like to apply for this specific bucket, you can head over here and edit them. Um, this shows your object honor, uh, ownership, that is ACLs are disabled. This shows your um, access control list and assuming you have any course policies that you want to set up, you can put them up over here. Coming up to uh, metrics, this basically shows your metrics, what's your total to bucket size, total number of object, uh, the different storage class analysis, your replication metrics, assuming replication has been enabled. Finally, coming to management. Here um, you have your lifecycle rules. Basically, what does lifecycle rules tell us? It's basically moving our objects 
from one storage class to another or maybe put them up for deletion or something like that. Again, we will go in more depth into lifecycle rules. Uh, you have replication rules, as I um, said back here, that you can replicate your um, data to any region. So that's where this replication rule comes into. We have two types of replication. One is SRR and one is CRR. SRR is basically same region replication and CRR is cross region replication. Coming down, you have your inventory configurations. In case any inventory configurations you want, you can create, edit, or modify your um, inventory configuration. Finally, coming to access points. These are basically any access points that you do create. Um, we're not going to touch much about access points right now, but uh, in the future videos, we, uh, we will. So this is basically your um, complete idea about your um, buckets and overview. And um, yeah, uh, that's about it for that. And again, let's come back to our buckets page and let's take you want to delete the bucket. So you can just select the bucket over here and you can click on delete. You can click on delete. It'll ask you to type in your bucket name. So that is AWS uh, tutorial S3 YouTube. And as you can see, the name has uh, validated. We can click on delete bucket. And another small tip, assuming that your bucket does have objects in it, you will not be able to delete it. First, you will have to run the empty command, which will basically completely empty your bucket, uh, post which you will be able to delete your bucket. So that is about it for this um, video. If you guys did like it, please make sure to um, leave a like and do subscribe. We will be diving more in depth related to Amazon S3. This was just an overview about the various features about S3 and how to create a basic S3 bucket. Um, uh, hope you guys liked it. Please make sure to subscribe and do leave a comment for any further topics you would like to meet, uh, like me to cover. Hope you guys have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.